Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up on Roku in the sports section. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, one of the ways, I think, to get an edge on the casino is to follow the trainers and the fight styles. One of boxing's more successful and also more low-key trainers is a former WBA middleweight champion. In fact, he was a WBO light middleweight champion in his heyday as well, John David Jackson. Understand this guy, who used to fight under Emmanuel Stewart, is now the trainer for Sergei Kovalev, the light heavyweight champion. Now you may recall Kovalev destroying long jabbers like Gabriel Campillo, himself a former light heavyweight champion, and recently Ishmael Shalak. And the way Kovalev does it is with spacing and movement. Guys with long jabs have a hard time finding him, right? Kovalev's head rarely snaps back, right? He seems to be able to move out of the way. He times it. Then as a long jabber, he's either pulling back the jab or is trying to set up to throw another jab after Kovalev has moved, Kovalev will jump inside with power shots. He'll let his hands go. Right? And Kovalev has had great results. It's gotten him the title. In fact, he's been feasting on these taller fighters with jabs. Think Nathan Cleverly. Well, another John David Jackson fighter who has great movement, just like Kovalev, moves around the ring better than you think, and who's able to time his entry point so that when a jabber isn't ready, especially not a less mobile jabber than him, he can jump in and throw combinations, only this guy goes to the body more than Kovalev does. Is the champ at 140 pounds. He's unbeaten. He is Khabib Alakverdiev. Now there are efforts to put him together with former Floyd Mayweather fighter, unbeaten Jesse Vargas, in a battle of unbeatens for the title at 140 pounds. I like this fight. I think just like Sergei Kovalev destroyed Ishmael Shalak, I'm expecting Alak Verdiev to beat the better known and unbeaten, better known in the United States. Alec Verdiev is Russian, right? I'm expecting Alec Verdiev to beat the better known and unbeaten Jesse Vargas, right? I just believe that Alec Verdiev has too much going for him. Now, let me point out that while the trainer's the same, John David Jackson, the fighters are a bit different. Kovalev has devastating punching power. Kovalev easily is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport of boxing. Alec Verdiev doesn't hit as hard, although he has a punch. Look at the end of that Kaiser Mabusa fight, right? Mabusa gets hurt. This is the same Mabusa who was giving Zab Judah all kinds of trouble, right? Here, He's clearly outgunned because he can't match the foot speed of Alec Verdiev. And when Alec Verdiev drops him, you can tell that Mabuza doesn't know what hit him. When Alec Verdiev drops him again, it's scary. 
Mabusa is not moving on the canvas. Right? Now, Vargas is a right-handed fighter whose best punch, in my opinion, is a left hook up front. Right? I believe that punch is hard to land on a mobile southpaw like Alec Verdiev. Right? Alec Verdiev also is two inches shorter than Jesse Vargas. Right? He leverages that difference by having his hands up. Right? He has his hands up too much to get caught cold with a left hook. By having his hands up and by being able to crouch. So what you have is apart from the punches throw, you have a guy who's able to move well while in a crouch, right? I get the feeling that Alec Verdiev will be looking for that Vargas left hook all night long. Understand too that Vargas doesn't punch as hard as Alec Verdiev. So Alec Verdiev can literally fixate on the left hook without worrying about getting knocked out by the rest of Vargas's arsenal. Several of Vargas's recent fights have gone the distance, right? So I'm expecting Alec Verdiev <clears throat> to just look better than Vargas. He'll be the one moving around the ring. He'll be the one having Vargas miss. He'll be the one dictating when they engage because he's the one with the faster foot speed, right? He's also going to be the one coming inside, throwing the dramatic combinations, right? Because he can come inside. He's a good counter puncher. So the height difference isn't going to affect his ability to land shots. Vargas does have hand speed. He is a judge pleaser. And by that I mean Vargas has had several close fights. The Jose Cito Lopez fight, for example. And the judges have given him the win. Right? The Ray Nar fight. If you watch the fight, you say to yourself, this is a close fight. Then the scores come in, and it's Jesse Vargas by UD. Right? Vargas is a guy who just looks good to judges. He's the guy who seems to throw the longer, more dramatic punches. But looks are deceiving. <clears throat> right? The punches aren't knocking anyone out. Right? Vargas really only has one knockout punch, in my opinion. It's that left hook. Right? And Vargas, while he is able to look great against Jose Cito Lopez at times. Understand, Lopez is coming right at you. And if you look at Lopez's record, you're going to see that Lopez, who I know broke Victor Ortiz's jaw, isn't that big a puncher himself. Against Alec Verdiev, you're going to have a different dynamic. You're going to have a guy moving around the ring. Not just coming up to him to engage but moving around the ring. You're going to have a guy who is going to be hard to find with a left jab or a left hook. Right? You know, Vargas, unfortunately for him, you know what they say about fighting a southpaw. Alec Verdiev is a southpaw. Vargas's right hand isn't that explosive. They claim the way to beat a southpaw is with a straight right hand. Vargas's right hand isn't good enough, in my opinion, to do that. I know I'm talking about an unbeaten fighter, but let's just call it as it is. Let me also backtrack a little bit. I know people are going to say that the Yoan Guzman Khabib Alec Verdia fight was a close fight. I'm just here to tell you life's unfair. I know Guzman is a guy who has blown more than one way in. I know people view Guzman as a guy who, like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., 
isn't taking the sport as seriously as he should be. Right? There are, you know, situations where the guy is off, not by ounces at the weigh-in, but by pounds. Right? But as flaky as Guzman is, he's an underrated fighter. And also, Guzman lined up well with Alec Verdiev because they're both southpaws. Right? So that fight, in my opinion, was a closer fight than this fight's going to be. So if this fight happens in a battle of unbeatens, I'm going with Khabib Alec Verdiev to successfully defend his 140-pound title. I think the fight's going to look a lot like Kovalev against Shalak at light heavy with the shorter, mobile John David Jackson fighter successfully avoiding a jab, coming in with multiple counter punches before the opponent can reset, then getting back out, right? Only Khabib Alekverdiev is a little bit more dramatic than Kovalev in his body attack. So I believe it's going to be a striking fight. I like Alec Verdiev in this one. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online, and I also hope you visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.